Alrighty, welcome to another Modern Horizons 3 draft here in Early Access, and uh, I see myself taking Wrath of the Skies here. X white white, you get X energy, then you can pay any amount of energy to destroy each artifact, creature, and enchantment with mana value less than equal to. So, if I first pick this, which, which I will, I think, I think it's actually just the right first pick by quite a bit here, my goal would be to draft kind of a Jeskai Control energy deck. When you have a Wrath, like having some blue card draw spells to go with it sounds really nice. And the red energy cards are good too, so it's probably some mix of those. Passing like a Precursor, a Bridgeworks Battle, a Glaring Fresh Flesh Raker and all that, but I'm going to take Wrath of the Skies. I'm, 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 I'm excited. Oh, and to eat the Revolt. Woo. So this is two red red. And whenever you get one or more energy, Ether Revolt deals damage damage to any target. Look at the combo. You just cast Wrath of the Skies and you for five, and you get five energy, and then deal five. Also, this has Revolt, so as long as the permanence left the battlefield under your control, it deals plus two damage <coughs> this turn. So there's also a Kozlex Unsealing and a Deep Analysis. Those are good cards, and Galvanic Discharge, but we're taking Ether Revolt. I, I don't care if it's right, even though I think it probably is right, but even if it weren't, I would be I would be taking it. I mean, Galvanic Discharge is a very good card too, but look at this. We started with two good energy rares. Oh yeah, we are cooking. We are cooking. Let's see uh, what else we can get going here. Mm, oh, Unstable Amulet is almost assuredly the pick. When you play this, it you get two energy. Whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, it deals one damage to each opponent. Oh wow, that works with Aether Revolt because non-damage, non-combat damage it now deals three damage. And then... Uh, you can tap it and pay two energy to exile the top card and play it this turn. Or play it until you exile another card with the amulet. Even better. So, Revolt probably pretty easy to obtain with all the fetch lands. So, it, the Revolt part about this card is not like the biggest part. It's obviously the when you get energy deal that much damage. But if you get Revolt on, it seems like a pretty nice little bonus. And uh, I bet I could... I bet I could pick up a couple fetch lands here and there, especially since I think we're most likely to be Jeskai anyway. And here, wow, Emperor of Bones is a really good card. Two mana, two, two, you can adapt it, and then you get to Corpse Dance a creature, which is sick, but I'm not going to take it. This goes and gets enchantments or artifacts, which is kind of nice. Mog Mob is going to be a little hard to cast. I'm thinking I just take Electrozoa. Flash Flying, get two things. I mean, Metastatic Evangel is, is good, because when you play a creature, then you get to get yourself an energy. I kind of think Electrozo is still going to be better for me. I just don't know how many creatures I'm, I'm going to have in the deck. And I don't mind I don't mind going into Just Guy. You know, that's not that's not bothering me. A lot of good black. A looter is pretty good. Drown Yard Lurker is, is not bad. Riddlegate Gargoyle is, is pretty nice in general, but I think I think Tempest Harvester. Oh wow, Mog Mob either Revolt. Deals 3-3-3. Three, three, three. That's pretty sick. I think I'll just take Tempest Harvester. I feel like this card's going to be a little easier to cast than the Riddlegate Gargoyle and also just good for what this deck's going to try to do. And then here, I think I want Aether Spike over Serum Visionary. Just a two-drop counterspell is pretty sick. So I'm going to be blue-red maybe splashing the Wrath, which I know that the double white looks weird to splash, but it's a card that I want to cast when you have like six plus mana most of the time. Though you can cast it for cheaper sometimes too. You don't. You can spend energy that you've gotten from other sources, obviously, so it can be a really efficient card. But I just kind of expected to be just guy, just guy. And we'll, we'll see if we can end up there. Yeah, Mog Mob, Aether Revolt is sick, but I, I feel like this deck's going to be three colors, so a triple red card is probably not <laughs> not, not on the t table here. Look at that jewel dog. She's being a good dog. You can tell. Mm, smelted charge bug or rhino or a red-blue fetch. I think the charge bug is just kind of medium for me, and same with the axe. Uh, Either revolt whenever you get more and more energy. So this proliferates, which is nice. Puts a shield counter on. I think I'll just take the land, though. I think having some fixers are good. I just feel like I'm not going to want to play, like, too many early white cards. Like, even if I'm Jeskai in intending to cast a double white card, a, a white three drop or, like, the gargoyle, a white two drop is not quite as enticing to me. But we'll see. If I get past a really good white card in this pack, I'll probably still just take it. Certainly expected to play a lot of blue. 
and oh John Yard Lurker is good and, and Rose Caught Knight is not bad, but I think I, I think Tamiya meets the story circle. Shuffle back in Wrath of the Skies. And just use it to draw a bunch of cards. Alright. Kind of in for that. Getting some uh some more fixing would be nice. Electrozoa is decent. Unstable amulet seems pretty nice. Oh, clues do trigger revolt. That's a that's a great point. I think uh, having ways to get revolt going is nice. Uh, I'll just take another red blue land. I don't think sage is good in this deck. Same with glimpse. And this is kind of what I'm talking about. Where like I'm red blue and these are both not for me really. <laughs> I mean, glimpse isn't terrible, but I think seething landscape is still better. Oh, I'll take another electrozoa. I think conduit goblin is a beating, but it's more for a red white aggro deck than for like a Jeskai energy deck. And then this is, oh, blue-white. Okay, I'll take that over other, other insignificance. That's a late Dread Maw. All right, I'll take the Mog Mob. I don't think I'm going to play it. Oh, Rose Cotton Knight. So you need, it's Artifact or Enchantment? Okay. Not a 0 percenter. Oh, a special guest, the Endurance. Some green, black, more temp Emperors of Bones and Whites. I'm just going to take Static Prison. If you have a lot of energy, this card's pretty good. Oh, you know what's also funny with uh, Static Prison is you can not pay it and sack it, and then I just Wrath of the Skies and blow everything up. So it doesn't even it doesn't even conflict with Wrath of the Skies. And it's another thing for Rose Cot Knight because right now I've got artifact or enchantment, artifact, enchantment. Like I could see getting there. I picked up three lands, so I can I can kind of just count on being just guy. There is a red white duel there, but it's not one that I really want to cast, so it's not that impressive. We've got some good disruption. Oh man, Sewing Myco Spawn is a great card, but not not really for me. I think I'll just take another Static Prison here. It looks really good. I would love to pick up an Unfathomable Truths, but I don't think I'm supposed to take it over a nice cheap removal spell. It's also really, really nice to be able to play this and the Wrath and not have that counter each other. Oh, Decree of Justice. So six mana make one angel or eight mana make two angels. Not that great, but Cycling... Six mana, you get a card and three soldiers. There's also Expel the Unworthy. I don't care about that. Smelted Charge Blood. <coughs> a whole Jeskai land is kind of nice, but I wonder if I should just take Unfathomable Truths. It seems like a pretty good card. Eh, Decree of Justice also seems pretty good. Let's just take Decree. This draw two cards and, disc and then discard a card at random unless you pay two energy versus... Draw two, flashback, draw two more. All right, I'll just take the draw two, flashback. A lot of lands in this deck. Or in this in this pack. I wouldn't mind... I wouldn't mind picking up a few more, but... Right now, I'm like blue-white. Maybe splashing either Revolt and Unstable Amulet. We'll see. Oh, well, I'm going to want to take Cy Cyclops, Cyclops Superconductor either way. It's a late Breaker of Creation. I think this is a pretty strong card for the Eldrazi decks. You're just going to gain eight life when you cast it. I mean, right now, if you have some blue card draw, I would love to see uh, some craft the narratives. Um, blue card draw with like deep analysis and like tempest harvester, and then some lands that fix. Then you you can play three colors. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> I mean, I actually think it will be. Ooh, look at this. This has a pinnacle monk is a is a tapped red land, but you you can get an instant or sorcery back. Yeah, I'll get back decree of justice or wrath of the skies. That sounds great. I'll take that over. It's really serum visionary or electrozoa, but I think a pinnacle monk is going to be awesome. And then here I'll probably take demon Fury. I've got card draw on my deck. Cast deep analysis and then cast demon Fury for one mana. Yeah, thank you. I'm in. And. Really what I'm going to be here is like a blue-white energy deck or blue-white-red energy deck. Like it's just going to be all three, but on the controlling side, which is why I took like Tempest Harvester over the Gargoyle. Even if even if they're equally easy to cast, I think Tempest Harvester is a little more what this deck is looking to do. I mean, having a Wrath just goes a long way. How many artifacts or enchantments do I have? Four enchantments and one artifact, so... Five cards. Let's say I end up with seven. Yeah. And this looks at six cards. All right. I guess seven's about the, the point where you're not, not too unhappy with with your odds. If you miss, it's a four or five. Oh, Flooded Strand? Oh, Depth Defiler. Oh, I've got to take Depth Defiler. I like Flooded Strand, but 
Five mana, three, five that either bounces or draw twos and discards. And I've got a bunch of colorless sources there. Why am I getting an eighth picked up, Defiler? That's really that's a really good question. <laughs> the card is just nuts. Why such a late flooded strand? Well, I mean, this is early access that no one cares about like the value. Also on Arena, rare drafting isn't really that much of a thing because every rare costs basically the same amount. So it's not like Flooded Strand is a busted card. Mm, Tempest Harvester looks pretty nice. I don't think I'm going to be a Kozlex Unsealing deck, unfortunately. Passing a lot of Eldrazi stuff here. Oh, Unfathomable Truths came back? Yes. I'm in for that. Now I've got... Yeah, Blue has it seems super open. I mean, with, with Truths, Deep Analysis, Double Harvester, Tamiyo meets the... Tamiyo meets the Clue Circle, then... I feel like I can just draw a lot of cards and then wrap them a bunch. I don't think that the fetch lands... Oh, I'll take the charge book, I'm not going to play it. I don't think Flooded Strand is is mostly worse than the common ones. I don't know. Like, I would trade this Tranquil Landscape for it, I think. Uh, I'll take Flare. I don't really know what I would do with such a thing, but I guess I'll take it. Okay. Hmm. Depth Defiler is a nice one. And, yeah, I've got even, like, Double Static Prison, Aether Spike. I don't have any Galvanic Discharges. Oh, wow. Last pick, Electrozoa. Ooh, Genku Future Shaper. So it's a 2-5, and whenever a non-token permit you control leaves the battlefield, so a fetch land, for example, you make a token. You either get a 2-2 two -two or a 1-2 one, one, one Flyer or a 1-1 one, one Lifelink, and you can't choose the same one each turn. That's not a big issue. And for 5 mana, you put a count on each creature you control. There's also Reiterating Bolt, which is a pretty fantastic card. But I feel like Genku is just like pretty sick. I mean, it seems pretty easy for for you to trigger that thing. All right. I'm going to take Genku over Reiterating Bolt just because I think the thing it offers is awesome. Oh, the, the Boros Titan. Yes, we're in. Fetch lands just got so good for me. Now that I have Genku and Flage, the fetches are just awesome. All right, I'll take that, and maybe I'll get Ether Spike back. That'd be cool. I don't think I'm going to, but we're we're just hard Jeskai control here at this point. All right, let's get these Electrozoas out of here. Like, maybe I'll play them, but I, I would kind of prefer not to at this point. Rose Cotton Knight I'm not super into. All right, so this is the Red Blue White fetch. Yeah, that's going to be hard to pass up. It's just so good with Genku or with Flage. Fills the graveyard for this so you can escape it, and it fixes your mana, and then this just triggers and gets you a token. Yeah, easy, easy landscape here. Really what I want is more removal, though Titan, the Flage is just so good for me because it is removal and gains me life, but then also is a win condition. Okay, I don't want Contaminated Landscape. I guess I would play that, but now it's like, do I want a second Unstable Amulet or do I want <coughs> uh, a Witch Enchanter? Um, I'm at 19 playables right now, pick four. I kind of, the, the Shrieking Drake, no, this is a horrendous card. Uh, I don't think I want Suppression Ray. I mean, this does tap all their creatures, but I think Witch Enchanter is, is really strong, so let's just take that. Having a Disenchant, <laughs> another Wrath? Are you kidding me? <laughs> all right, I'm looking around like, am I being pranked here? All right, well, I guess energy's open, huh? <laughs> This is this is looking this is looking nice. If I can just take some fetch lands to, to round this out, maybe one galvanic discharge though. You know, I'm not even gonna get greedy. I don't even need it. I just need a, I just need a couple fetches, and then we're and then we're in. I even have like Pinnacle Monk and Witch Enchanter, so I can play like 17 land plus those two or something like that. I mean, I have one tri land and then three duels pretty good oh another deep analysis i really don't think thriving sky claw is any good but i think deep analysis is pretty good there's also unfathomable truths number two they're both okay mm -hmm. here sink into stupor this is obs on land that does not help me or a third tempest harvester um I kind of feel like the third Tempest Harvester is not that great. And now I'm going to be playing a bunch of uh, double-faced lands. Oh, a Brain Surge or a Blue-White Duel. I don't think I need Brain Surge. And another fetch sounds great. Hey, the Swish Gaming. Thanks for the Zeraid. <laughs> uh, I'll take Solstice Zealot. I actually think I, I, I'll, I'll play that card. 
This is now 29. Yeah. Oh, second ether spike. Perfect. All right. Now I got to cut a couple cards here. Not that many because even though this is 30, it would be 15 lands. But I have Pinnacle Monk, the other, and uh, Witch Enchanter, and Sink into Stupor. So that's 18, though. I think I would rather cut a Rose Cot Knight because I didn't end up getting there really on a. Uh, on artifacts or enchantments i have yeah still one artifact four enchantments so i'm a couple short and how many ways one two uh whatever oh tammy meets the story circle i could cut but it kind of seems nice on this deck let's see one two three four five six seven eight <laughs> last big sky claw nine ten i'm trying to count how many ways i have to make energy right now one two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven? Yeah, that's probably good enough for Ether Revolt. All right, so right now this is eight, twelve, seventeen lands. So I can cut one land, I think, because I have a blue, a white, and a red double faced card. I guess I'll just cut a red, because this is red. So three, four, five, six red sources. Oh, I guess I have Flage. Maybe I do. Let's see, this is, these are all blue, right? So this is eight blue, nine blue, and five, six, seven, eight white. I do like a lot of white. All right, let's cut a blue then. Okay. Oh yeah, Tamiya fuels Flage. I mean, let's see if we can win with our <laughs> five rare deck or whatever. All right. Yeah, this, this looks nice. I have a lot of card on this deck, but I think that's going to work out just okay. Look. It's not a hard and fast rule that I have to stop at four wins. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> In before I go one, three. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen, though. We'll see. We'll see. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Though, to be honest, one of the things I love doing is counting my chickens before they're hatched. It's just one of my favorite activities. What's up, pickle bowls? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay. I'm on the play. All right. I mean, I don't have any white yet, but I can turn three. I can Demon Fear on the play, which is pretty good. Then I cast Revolt on four, Ether Revolt. And then when I play this, I get two energy and Nug for two. Oh, perfect. I actually kind of don't want to cast the Solstice Zealot because it's a it's a shock here. This is... Oh, <laughs> and then there's Flage too. All right, let's just chill. I don't know. I don't need to play anything. This, this deck is nice. I, I'm really excited to get to play this one. Molten Gatekeeper. Perfect, perfect. Oh, deep analysis, huh? Um, <laughs> let's just play Aether Revolt. Because then I can play, maybe play Zealot next turn. The other thing is look at this turn. I get to go deep analysis, cast Demon Fear for one mana. That's pretty nice, too. <laughs> Tywin Lannister, welcome <laughs> to the stream. This is the Mardu Land. I'm going to take a little damage here, but this is such a good card for me. All right, so they have to discard a card. Oh. Um, I think I'll just discard the deep analysis. Because now I have a different plan. It's Flage the Molten Gatekeeper and then deep analysis here. Oh, Flage with Revolt. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's pretty nice. Oh, Wrath too. <coughs> hmm. Do I want to fl flage? Or maybe... I mean, I have a lot of good plays. Like, they're all busted, so... I'm going to win no matter what, but... <coughs> mm -mm -mm -mm. Let's go... Deep analysis here. I know I'm giving up some Demon Fury value, but I think that's okay. And then I can go Solstice Zealot and Shock the Refurbished guy, or I can flage. Let's just go flage. Um... Nug the Molten Gatekeeper. I mean, it deals five, which is pretty nice. Though I unfortunately only gain, gain three. And then now, I've got a Wrath of the Skies, though this costs the same, so that's not really that great for me. I'm still at 17. I have no other cards in my graveyard yet, but a Fetch Land's going to go in. I have Demon Fear. I can play the Solstice Zealot to shock the Refurbished Familiar. Oh, 
You gonna make some creatures here? Because you probably don't unearth that unless you're playing at least one creature, and I would imagine maybe more. Into Junk Diver. That's kind of a weird play to make because they just took the only artifact out of their graveyard. Hmm. Okay. Oh. Wow, this card just goes goes pretty hard. Huh. What if I go like Perilous Landscape? Um, I guess get a Plains, sure. And then I can go Zealot. I can deal four? Oh, I guess I didn't even really need to do that because I'm just going to do this. And then I'm going to play the amulet. Wow. I mean, I could have nugged them for eight, but it kind of feels nice to just kill all their creatures here. I don't even know. I mean, if I revolt and then I just cast wrath, it just fireballs them for a bunch. I feel like... I, it's possible I could have just ignored their creatures and nugged them a bunch, but I guess against a red-black aggro deck, I don't really need to do that. It's not like they can kill Aether Revolt ever. They're not going to do a good job of killing Unstable Amulet either, I don't think. Oh, yeah, they got my uh, Souls to Zealot. You got me. All right, uh, end of turn. I'll exile. Draw. All right, I guess I'll play this. Wow, and this pings for one, too. I guess I didn't need to revolt last turn, actually. I, I, I lost some damage. That's fine. Let's use the amulet. Oh, all right. This, I'm going to wait, I think, on cracking that, because I, I really want to get my revolt value. All right, take three more. Wow, Ether Revolt is a messed up card. What the hell? I, I'm... I could just not attack and I could win this game really easily. <laughs> Are they going to kill the superconductor? I guess I could have maybe revolted this turn because that also will would work off off Ether Revolt. <laughs> Wrath of the Skies. Let's get a million energy. Hey, what up, Brain Genie? Welcome, welcome. Oh, exiled. You got me. You got me good. Ether Spike. All right, let's amulet here. Oh. All right, I think it might be time. How many cards have my graveyard? No, I'm really not that close. Let's loot here. <laughs> um, I don't even have to play Static Prison this turn, and I, uh, I guess I don't really want that thing around. Oh, it's a non-land permanent? Hold on. I'm just not going to... I'm not going to get Revolt this turn. And then I can Demon Fury that thing for one mana. <laughs> this game is... This game is so over. It's unbelievable how over this game is. I mean... I guess I can just get Revolt at will at this point, so... <laughs> let's just pass. Because I don't even have to play Static Prison this turn. They put that card on top... <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Why not? Mm -hmm. I mean, if I don't have lethal, it's got to be pretty close to it here. Next turn, I'm going to get to, let's see, let's draw. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's sack this. I don't even have many lands left to get. Not that it matters. All right, and let's play Flage. I'll leave a Souls to Zealot. Oh, the Unstable Amulet's going to ping them for three? Ooh. <laughs> and that's going to nug them for five? <laughs> I mean, this is just ridiculous. Uh, I could Static. <laughs> All right, let's just Loot. Oh, Tamiyo meets the story circle. Nice. Mm, play the seething thing. Play Tamiyo meets the story circle. And then I'll just pass here. I mean, they're so dead. Like, next turn I can Aether Spike and get them Ghostfire Slice. Sure. 
<laughs> Dreadmobile. Sure. I mean, they're so unbelievably dead here. Like Wrath, I can fireball them. Ether Spike deals four <laughs> if I wanted to. And I guess I just take my turn. <laughs> Decree of Justice. Uh, I'm just not going to discard cards here. Let's go sack this. I think I do I have a mountain to get even. Yeah, I got a couple. Static Prison. Amulet pings for three. <laughs> what a ridiculous card. Uh, let's get the Dreadmobile out of here. And revolt you. And... All right, well, we had damaged by a millions. Wow, this deck seems sick. This seems like the sickest deck I've drafted today. Like, it's got it's got some powerful stuff going on. I'm going to play another game here, but then I want to look at the sideboard and maybe see. After seeing a, a game or two play out, you can get a good sense here. I, d I didn't attack a single time that game. Tukanda, they were passing to us in one draft. Or we were passing to them. Opponent goes first. Yeah, see, look, this is a red land. Definitely a keeper. I don't have white here, but I'm probably just going to play Pinnacle Monk. I've got such a good late game hand that I should just play Pinnacle Monk turn one, unless I draw Literal Mountain. And then turn two, I can go Tempest Harvester. Also, Loot Away Deep Analysis is pretty nice. Let's see what they've got. Yeah, I'll play Pinnacle Monk. I don't really. Want, I think that the odds that I want to play that as a land are pretty high, and I don't really want to pay the life. Yeah, let's go Tempest Harvester. Oh, this is the Connive Land. Hmm. Seems like a reasonably strong card, sure. Swamp, swamp, swamp. Do they have the deal three or something? Oh, whenever a token leaves play, interesting. Uh, let's loot first here, because if I draw a white source, then I'll just. Flage. Um, I don't want to discard Mountain. I think I think I discard Solstice Zealot. And then I'm going to play this tapped and just pass. And then Ether Spike their next play. And then start casting Deep Analysis. I don't really want to. And I also, if I can, saving a fetch for the turn I play this is pretty nice. Yeah, take one. And if they've got a play, I'll counter it. And if they don't, I'm happy to. Oh, yeah. Ether spike that. Pay one. Yoink. Cyclops, I have two energy left. Eh. Let's just cast Deep Analysis. And just send for two. I don't know. I don't I feel like I don't need to loot. Because I, I, I found my white source. Next turn, I can go like. Cyclops Superconductor if I want. Archbound Con Archbound Condor. So 3-3. Three, three. They don't have any artifacts in play. I guess I could loot. I could play Superconductor. I and mean, I can bounce next turn with that thing. I kind of I kind of want to just let's just loot first. Because if I draw planes, that would be kind of nice. I don't really want to discard a Wrath either. I could discard the Cyclops. Mm, that's not crazy, actually. And then play Tranquil Landscape and then just pass with draw three up. I don't get to get my planes, but next turn I can play Depth Defiler to bounce the Condor. I also, not playing cards, sets up a Wrath better, though I'm not that close to casting Wrath. Okay, Cranial Ram. Yeah, they're going to kill my, uh, my, my, my looter. That's fine. I guess I'll take four here. Bum, bum, bum. Okay. Let's draw three. And I'm kind of assuming I'll also just draw planes at some point here. Oh, they're going to connive. Yeah, conniving isn't bad. One creature died this turn. All right, the cranial ram token is going to connive and... They're discarding a spell. I mean, if I get to double white, wrathing all that stuff sounds pretty good too. They just did discard a spell. They discarded a threatened thing. All right. Okay, there's a planes. 
And this is an artifact. So what I might do though is maybe I just, I don't need to wrath yet. I can go flage, deal three to the condor. Oh, do they have like one mana way to do something? Oh, that's pretty good. All right. I guess I'm glad I uh, am doing that now because then I can wrath next turn. Oh, I actually, I shouldn't have played the amulet if I was going to wrath. Definitely a mistake. I just uh, was like thinking wrath, wrath, not, not blowing up artifacts. Basically what I should have done there is not do that, but also it doesn't matter. Like this deck just seems absolutely obscene. I, I still have this Titan to bring back. All right, they're going to glimpse the impossible. I mean, that actually was a pretty good set of cards to hit against my next play because they get to sack their, their germ token. Does this have trample? No? All right. I'll block the 3-2 then. Don't really want to take a bunch of damage. I know I'm not sacking the, my land because I, I want to play Genku here. How many tokens do they want to get? Oh, they're not playing? No. They're not playing that card? They're just getting two tokens? Oh, it goes to the graveyard. Okay, that, that makes more sense. Yeah, sure. Um, let's amulet here. Sadly, I'm not going to get a chance to play it because I think I am going to wrath here. And I have one energy. So what am I going to do this turn? If I want to just straight up wrath, I need to get to three energy. So I can spend five mana and then I can play Tempest Harvester. Yeah, that seems fine. <coughs> they, they should cast sack both their spawns and cast uh, the, the flashback draw spell here in response. And sack, it doesn't matter what they sack, to be honest. I guess they shouldn't sack the Nightblade. So they should just sack the germ. And then I'm going to get drained for three. So I'm going to go to nine. But I still have this Titan to flashback. The Titan just is such an incredible card for this deck. Play four. I can still play that mountain. Oh, it's not. Actually, the mountain just, just chills there. Oh, nice. Okay. Pass. Excuse me. <clears throat> Next turn, I can bring back the Titan. I can also play a fetch, play Genku, and just get two creatures out of it. I also have a Depth of Fire still to play, and I haven't even flashed back Deep Analysis. They do have kind of a lot of cards in hand. <coughs> Excuse me. I was hoping last turn they would actually play to the board instead of cast a draw three, so that wasn't ideal, but I still feel like things are pretty good. Oh, they're going to kill that. That's their play. Oh, either Revolt. Mm -mm. Let's go Seething Landscape. <laughs> Let's just play Genku. And nine. I'm going to pass the turn. I don't need to flash back Deep Analysis here. So I just want to play Genku and get some tokens out of it. I mean, it kind of feels like they're going to kill my Genku. We'll see. All right. Uh, seed. Let's get two two vigilance and get a tranquil landscape. Um, sure, I'll get a mountain yeah, and I'll get an island here. And I'll make a life linker. I think I'd rather have. <laughs> And then this thing dies. And then there, there are three cards against <laughs> my three cards. <laughs> really, I have <laughs> six cards I can play, and then two of those draw cards, and this eats a card. So, yeah, I think it's going to be pretty tough. I also have this Ether Revolt in hand, which, depending on how I play things, could have... thing. Oh, I mean, they have a pretty good red-black sack deck. This nugs me for one whenever another creature artifact is put into the battlefield, or in a graveyard from the battlefield. They discarded a... I'm really glad they discarded this thing, because stealing Flage and attacking with it is pretty brutal. 
and then I'm gonna fang flame smoke. <laughs> yeah, you, you you got me. I can't even connive here. Okay. Well, I was probably bringing, bringing Flage back anyway, so yeah, let's do that. Let's get rid of Tempest Dude. Draw. No, nah, the draw three I might shuffle back in. Tempest Dude. Land. I guess Ether Spike. And sure, Cyclops. I don't know. Do, do, do. Nug for three. Game three. Let's just now now I feel safe enough to deep analysis. I just wanted to make sure I got my, my three life here. Play my mountain. And I'll attack. They have sack stuff, so getting their thing off the board seems fine. And I get my lifelink point in. And then now I get to keep Ether Spike, which is a four point counter spell, which seems pretty good. And then I get to Tamio meets the story circle. That's gonna be so sick. I'm just gonna discard a couple of cards, make a bunch of clues, and then shuffle back in Genku, Wrath, and Unstable Amulet or something. I don't even think Active Treason would really do a whole lot. Oh, I guess I can't... Uh, dang, I guess I'll just have to bring him back again. <laughs> Ethereum Terramander? Sure, I guess that's a target for it. That works for me. Oh, they're going to connive? Pretty good. Yeah, I agree, Sir Rhino. This... Th this deck is just busted. This is going to be one of the better decks I'll have ever drafted in this format, I feel like. I mean, I don't even need to bring it back. I can just cast Witch Enchanter and eat the Terramander. And I can cast Tamiya Meets the Story Circle. I can send for one. And I, I'll even leave a land in hand to discard to Tamiya Meets the Story Circle. I'm not even going to want to discard that many cards because I don't want to deck myself. You need two of these to loop, but I think one will be fine. Mm, yeah, I guess countering that's probably good. <laughs> Pay two energy to counter their 4-4. Four, four. I mean, if I were them, I would have conceded a long time ago. This would have broken my spirit. I'm just going to discard one. I, I feel like I am not going to have a hard time drawing through my whole deck here. Mm, yeah, let's flage. Why not? All right. I get to still even leave some pretty gassy stuff in there in my graveyard, and I guess I might as well cast Ether Revolt. I, I, the other option would be that I could... Uh, Crack some clues, but I think casting either revolt and getting into play seems fine. And then next turn, I was complaining that that Julie's forsaken her, so I'm going to send her a picture of Jules. <laughs> what can you do? What can you do about that? Wow, my opponent's going deep in the tank for a zero percent game. <laughs> Not that I blame them. I think uh, you can. Uh, you know, it's definitely fine to try to scrape out that 1% of a win. I don't usually have that in me, but, you know, no, I'm not going to... I'm definitely not faulting anyone for doing that. You're not supposed to, like, concede really early in a, in a streamer, in the streamer event, but you can concede it. Like, they they could concede this game if they wanted to. This game is, is over, you know. You, you know, the idea is, like, don't ruin other people's fun. But honestly, the people complaining about that, it's just so unbelievably overblown. Okay, so they made this, so they're going to try to steal my flage. Mm, yeah, I'll shuffle all three back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, nug that thing. And then I just fireball them out with Wrath of the Skies. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I oh, even had one mana, one mana left. Oh, now it has revolt. <laughs> even better. All right, all right. This deck's cruising. Okay, let's take a look. Is there anything in the sideboard that would help? I guess the biggest thing we have in the sideboard is like 
Rose Cotton Knight, Flare of Duplication, Mog Mob, but I don't think that's reasonable to cast. No. No, we're, we're, we're doing good. Perfect build. I mean, this deck is just beyond absurd. Having two Wrath and the Lightning Helix Titan is already, like, a lot, and it has a lot more than that. <laughs> yeah, Decree of Justice, all that stuff. All right. I'm on the play. Mm, obviously, I would like to draw blue here, but... Oh, yeah, the Jewel Dog's back there. She's chilling. She's really happy out here, I think. Oh, retrofitted Transmogrant. Look at you. Oh, blue. Very nice. I'll just leave the, the Transmogrant in play. I mean, you know, no big deal. Void Pouncer. Yeah. Let's just ether spike that, pay one energy. That'll just give us time. Like I, I will I will likely wrath something at you know at some point here, but I don't really need to do it right now. Jund. Junding it up, huh? Evolution witness? Oh, that's annoying. Um I don't really even want to static prison it. I think I'm just gonna Chill, and then next turn I'll play this as a 3-5 draw 2. Okay, not going for the instant speed adapt. Pretty reasonable. Now I draw that? All right, well, I'm still casting this. Ba -ba -ba. Target player draws 2 and discards a card. I got my eye on you, Cyclops Superconductor. Um, I could just discard Tranquil Landscape, though. I don't want to discard Deep Analysis. I feel like, I feel like I'm going to be pretty happy... Casting that twice this game. Recycling the Warp Tusker. Oh, and then I'm going to get it back with the Evolution Witness. Okay, so this is more like an Eldrazi deck. It looked like a red-black beatdown deck when they went Transmogrant into thing. And the, and the Transmogrant still looks like a little bit out of place here. But it, this is actually just John Eldrazi. Mm, attacking. All right, I'll block with the witness, I guess. I don't know what's going on here. Oh, Gift of the Viper. Oh, but you can't adapt it now. No, nope. people are making that mistake all the time. Now you can't adapt it. You needed to adapt it first, and that would have gotten, oh, even worse, doubling down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that that's a beat. <laughs> So instead of them having this in play and a Warp Tusker in hand, they have neither of those things. Ooh. You know what? So it goes sometimes. Uh, I'm just going to cast Deep Analysis here. Why did you leave? I, I mean, I guess I know technically why they left Double White, but come on. I kind of wanted to flash back Deep Analysis there. If I had the finances to purchase the one out of one ring, was that something I would have done? No. <laughs> I mean... I'm not going to begrudge anyone spending their money on the things they want to spend their money on, but, like, if I were in a position to buy that, I would still rather buy that much worth of, like, alpha cards instead. I, I, I find those much cooler. 5-3 um, Trample, huh? I'm at 8. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I could cast Wrath for 2. I could also... Why don't I just Static Prison the Void Pouncer here? And when it comes back, it won't have all the counters on it and whatnot. And then I'll just play the Superconductor here. And given my hand, I feel like I shouldn't, I shouldn't flash back Deep Analysis here. And do I want to sack this to get a Mountain? I have a bunch of stuff that cares about land or revolt. Propagator Druin. Other tokens you control have evolved, so now that evolves. And this has four mana make a token. Okay. <coughs> and then a Thriving Skyclaw. I don't really like that either. All right, this might be the turn... I blow stuff up. They have one card left in hand. Let's leave the Perilous Landscape in play. And 
Not Cycling Decree. Draw. Oh, Demon Inferior. Interesting. I could pay. No, I'm just going to give them their thing back. <laughs> yeah, they can evolve again. That's fine. And then cast. So what else am I casting besides Wrath of the Skies here? I have seven mana. I could cast it just for two mana and cast... Or I could cast Unfathomable Truths. Why don't I just start by casting Unfathomable Truths? Oh, wait, no, no, no. I don't want to lose my Eldrazi token. That's fine. So let's cast Wrath for just two mana. X equals zero. I mean, this Wrath card is so good. Unbelievable. And then I'm going to pay four, man four energy. Cyclops is going down. And then I cast Unfathomable Truths because I haven't played a land yet. <laughs> Another wrath. Oh, uh, you know what? I'll play this. As, I'll play this as a land. That's fine. Uh, yeah. This 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 is just ridiculous. They can bring this back as a three three, and that is not a concern. Play Genku. Land. And I guess play Ether Revolt. Why not? Okay. Their last card is a removal spell. Not a big deal. Let's make a 2-2. Two, two. I mean, I'm just going to do the same thing I did again. I'll get a mountain, I guess. And then sack. Oh, this doesn't make a thing. All right, I'll just make a 2-2 two, two then. And then Revolt comes in. And then they have no cards. They're going to get to end of turn make... Oh, they can't even bring this back end of turn because they don't have a <laughs> an extra black. You love to see it. All right. Uh, pass. And then now five. I mean, I might just cast Decree of Justice here. Yeah, I think so. If I draw a land, especially. Okay, I did not draw a land. So maybe I cycle it then. Because I could cast it and make two angels. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I guess I guess I'll just cast it and make two angels. Wait, I do have enough mana to make make more. Bum bum bum. I, I I knew I had the spawn, but I was miscounting it. Even better. All right, X equals three. Whew. All right, well, you get a 3-3, three, three, and you get to put the Basking Brood Scale up to snuff here, get to adapt that, but this is, I mean, we've we've battled, and I have an advantage on board with the Angels. I still have Ether Revolt. I still have Deep Analysis if I want to use it, which I even haven't been because I don't want to go to 5, and I have another Wrath, and <laughs> uh, all right, uh... <laughs> this deck. I think they're just dead. I actually think I, I think I literally have lethal here. Okay, let's tap these to cast Flage. Yeah, this this has got to be lethal. <laughs> this was gonna deal five because you stack it so it leaves deals five. Play Tempest Harvester deal four, and then play the Wrath to get two energy and deal another four. Yeah. All right, well, uh, let's keep going. I'm not going to stop with this deck till till they make me stop playing. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> and now we're battling NPR. <laughs> Your source for news and games of magic. I'm on the play. All right. I, I guess I'm going to sack this to get a blue, but I'll try to hold off on using the other fetch because I, I need the blue to cast Genku anyway. Though a static prison to, to, to lock away their thing for a few turns and then let it come back the turn you're going to Wrath is pretty nice. It's basically all is correct just to sack this immediately. I mean, what is your opponent going to do with that information? Nothing, and you get to avoid a bunch of priority passes. The Dream, which one's this? Oh, it's an interruption. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Little Looter. Lunarino. 
Yeah, let's loot. Uh, I can discard a planes for sure. Hmm. Let's just play a landscape. I'm going to wait on this monk. I, I kind of feel like I'll just be casting it this game. I have double red off these two lands if I want them. I have not really played against a full modified deck, so I haven't really seen it in action. I guess I played against a, I played against a green-white deck that I guess was a modified deck, but it just kind of beat me down. It went 3-3 three, three into 3-3 three, three into support them both and to kill your thing, and that was it. Oh, they drew an island. I, I don't really want Genku Shaper. Ooh, that's pretty good. It has haste too. Wow. All right. I don't really want to play that exposed. Let's let's loot again because my hand's kind of bad. Oh, that's nice. All right. Mm. I guess I'll discard the mountain. No, I'll, I'll discard the. No, no, no. I'll discard the mountain. That's fine. Deep analysis. Okay. Next turn. Likely going to play Genku. <laughs> Teamer. Okay. Teamer with a 2-2 flying haste. Though this, this card's good enough, you just play it in any deck. But I would like to exile that, though I guess this doesn't exile it for good. Sink in the stupor could be good at some point here, too. It'll kind of depend what they play. Though my Tempest Harvester is about out of loots. Okay, well, less emoting, more taking your turn. <laughs> when you're uh, going deep in the tank to try to figure out what your mode to play, it's like... Wumpus Aberration. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I'll put a Genku into play. That sounds pretty good. Oh, Tamiyo meets the story circle. Mm. Let's see. Do I don't, what do I want to do here? I guess I'm going to go Static Prison on the Wumpus. And then play a landscape. Tap these two. Play Tamiyo meets the story circle. And I'm going to sack this and get a mountain. And make a 2-2. Two, two. And then hit for 4. That just preserves the option to make another 2-2 two, two on their turn. This is the Obzon land? Don't really know what's going on. <laughs> I'm going to Static Prison this thing for at least two more turns. I could also use Wrath just as an energy generator to, to keep the thing in the prison, which wouldn't be terrible. If they Static Prison... Oh. I'm going to exile the, the Static Prison. Sure. All right. Let's make a 2-2. Two, two. Okay, so when that leaves the battlefield, I draw a card. Yeah, I'll sack this. I'll make a 1-1 one, one lifelinker, I think. And then I think here I actually get double blue because of the sink into stupor. Another wrath. Um, I want to discard at least one card. I think I discard the monk. It is possible I discard the wrath. Yeah, I can get a wrath back with the monk. That seems fine. Genku with the clues is really nice. What do I do here? I mean, even if I bounce this thing, I still can't really attack all that well. Putting a plus one, plus one counter on my creature seems pretty good. Hmm. I think I'm going to start by sacking a clue. Just make another 2-2. Two, two. Oh, it's non-token. Never mind. Mm -hmm. I thought I, I thought I broke it. Um, I'm at sixteen. Uh, deep analysis. I'm just gonna try to hit my land drops. My, <laughs> I mean, I guess I, I guess I'll play one of the spell lands. It's fine, but it's like, uh, come on. All right, I'll play this. Uh, I think I will have it enter tapped. I don't really want to pay three life. Uh, I guess I could loot. I could have looted as well. Let's just pass the turn. I'll block the Wumpus Aberration with a bunch of stuff here. 
Tamiya meets the story circle, probably going to shuffle back Wrath and maybe a fetch or something. Oh yeah, Genku's a fantastic card. So they, maybe they're playing this as just a colorless source. That seems reasonable. All right, I'll take take some damage. If they don't kill Genku, then I'm going to get to start just using the activated ability. Glaring Flushraker, 2-2. Two, two. You cast a colorless, make, it, make a thing, and then this pings when they cast colorless, sure. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll loot. I don't really want this Cyclops, I don't think. Though maybe it's good with Ether Revolt, I don't know. Shuffle Cyclops, Wrath, and actually it will shuffle uh, one of the fetches in. I don't think they're that bad. Oh, and this triggers again, of course. Make a 1-2 flyer now. And six mana. Uh, really do want to draw lands. I mean, either Revolt is pretty nice, but if I... Let's just loot. Oh, that's really good, too. Maybe I discard the Aether Spike. They have a lot of lands. All right. And I can go... Ether Revolt. I have Revolt right now, so if I play that and I play Tempest Harvester, I get to deal four. Seems kind of nice. And then play this. Mm. I think I'll just kill that thing. And despite the fact that missing a land drop is pretty brutal, this having a stink in the super around seems a lot better. I mean, my deck just does unbelievably powerful things. Yeah, sure. Well, I'm glad I killed this thing. They would have pinged me for three there. Four, because this would have made a token too. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I, there's a good chance I cycle this card. I don't know. I just have a million things to do with my mana. Genku and Wrath is like kind of not a combo exactly, but next turn... Hmm, I kind of want to cast Unfathomable Truths. We'll see. I, I should probably start using Genko. Right now it's paying five mana to put seven counters on my creatures. Like, that's pretty absurd. Maybe, especially if I draw a fetch and can get another thing into play. And these looters have also been pretty nice. Just cheap little looters, make some energy, use the energy. If they attack with Wumpus, I'm going to triple block with like Tempest Harvester and two cats probably the phoenix could get in if they want oh okay they're sacking some tokens what are they casting infernal captor okay so they're sacking itself i guess maybe they're sacking the phoenix sure they want to be able to bestow this at some point or they take genku <coughs> okay Oh, sure, and then they sack the fetch and they get a Genku token. Woo! Look at this. Mm -hmm. And they still don't really have good attacks, and this is... So I draw a card. What do they exile with that? Oh, the prison, yeah. Yeah, the Genku attack is, is, is good. It's free. Block. Sorry. Block, and... Uh, I guess I'll block like this. So, because I don't want to block with the Tempest Harvester, because I don't have Genku in play. I want to get my full value off Genku. <laughs> okay, and I gain a life. Woo! All right, well, that also means I don't have to use Genku this turn. I can cast my spells. <laughs> Even better. They get another token. Oh, Solstice Zealot. Okay. Mm -hmm -hmm. So, four, five, I get two energy. Um, how do I want to do this? Feels like there's a million ways to, to kind of get the job done. Do I have revolt? I guess I could start by getting revolt. <laughs> uh, classic. Uh, and then I, I do I do really need to play this this turn. And kill the thief. Draw a card. Yep. Okay, I'm going to hit my land drop, thank. thankfully. Do I want to 
tap my harvesters. I don't have that much that I want to play this turn, so let's just chill. They bestow collect evidence six, so they can bestow and give a thing plus two plus two, flying in haste. I mean, bestow onto the writhing chrysalis actually is pretty good. Mm. Yeah, maybe a maybe a. I guess I'll be protected from that after this turn. So I'm going to go to four here. I'll have to maybe get this rat token in. Oh, really? Not on the chrysalis? Huh. Do you think you have attacks with the chrysalis otherwise? Oh. Am I dead? I guess I am. They they had Sundering Eruption. That was their draw. I don't have a blue left to get either. All right. I guess I am going to lose one here. Oh, I can make a flyer. Wait, making a flyer, let's see, it means I don't die. Huh, this doesn't have trample or anything, right? <laughs> they needed to kill their own land. They Oh, they messed up bad. Okay, Um. can I win on my turn? Let's see, I can attack for two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. And then, yeah, I just win. <laughs> All right, nice. Whew, that was close. They need to just do it on their own land. That was a pretty large error, luckily for me. Mm, let's see. Play this. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. They have a, a, their thing has vigilance. Uh, if they block the 2 3, they take 7 going to 9. And then I make 6 energy. That doesn't quite kill them. Mm, is there any way to make more energy than that? <sighs> Hold on. Uh, or do anything else. I guess I'm at two. I can tap that. I can ether spike my own spell. Yeah, that's paying two to get two energy, but then that deals four damage. Yeah. All right. That, that I think should work then. Okay. Now I have Revolt. Sure, I'll make a 1 2. Wrath for 4. They take 6, and then they take 4 more. Do, do, do. Okay, pay 0. Nug you for 4. Whew. And then nug you for six. Pay zero. Kill some tokens. And boom. Oh. We'll take it. What a nice game. Oh, man. I, I was. That, that Phoenix is a sick card for sure. Oh, I should have lost. They had Falter plus Phoenix that turn. <laughs> All right. Well, didn't. Didn't lose. They, they really needed to not kill my own land there. And you can target your own land. You don't to, to make the unblockable happen. Have I peaked already in this format? Yeah, you, you could say so. Mm -hmm. Ooh. The buy hit 4-0. Wow. It's pretty lucky. Mm -hmm. This gets a blue. Perfection. Mm -hmm. I will have to play this. And use it. I'll go get a looter. How oh, I ended up with like a bunch of fetches in this deck, and it's really good. Let's cast Tempest Harvester. And kind of slow hand. Well, I have a two, three, four. Kind of, I guess, sorry, not very complicated. And I don't have a lot going on here. Uh. I think I'm just going to loot here. I don't really care about attacking for two damage. And I have a bunch of energy. Let's just chill. Plus, it's probably cycling. Oh, Planner Genesis. Going to impulse a land into play? Most likely. Okay. So they go to landscape, and then they get to crack their other landscape. So that's probably a blue or green land. Most likely just Teamer Eldrazi over here from what it looks like. 
Yeah, the meddler. Who are you meddling? The looter? Okay, well, I'm going to loot. Discard of planes. Take my turn. And I think I'm just going to play Genku here. He's blue-green. doesn't have that many ways to kill it. Do I tap the Meddler here? I don't know if I care about getting hit for four. I guess the thing is, he's going to go to attack most likely first. Oh, is he going to kill my guy? I hope not. Uh, Depth of is going to bounce it. Okay. Mm, that's a really good card. Do I want to spend an energy to prevent four damage? I think so. I think now that I think this is coming back, I guess I'm a little more likely to, though I could also set up a, a wrath. I think I'll be able to set up a wrath regardless. Hmm. Let's just let's just hold off on that wrath on on that wrath talk here. And pass the turn. I don't really even need to to loot or tap. I might tap. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. So you can cast the top card of your deck every turn. So it's only permanent opponent controls. I can't use static prison to hide my Genku. Yeah, I guess you can attack. That's fine. <coughs> Do you have attacks here? I mean, kind of. You can attack. I can block with Genku and a cat token. And like one of the other cards, so I'm kind of trading one of my creatures for theirs. Yeah, Ugin's Binding is, is, a, is a bit of a beating. Okay, let's sack this. Let's go to 2-2, two, two. and I guess I'm getting a blue here, yeah. And blocking the meddler here. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> I'm hoping he doesn't have a pump spell or anything. Okay, he does not. And then I get to get another creature, which I guess... I guess I'll get a 1-2 flyer. Yeah, I guess I want him to, to, to flash back the, the binding first. Oh, man. Okay, and he's got one card left. I guess I'm not going to loot... Either Revolt is pretty nice, but I think putting counters on my things is probably better. Let's just pass. So you can play creatures off the top. Okay. Let's see what you got. I mean, I am scared of the Ugin's Binding. Maybe he has got an Emerge creature, so you can make a giant thing okay he could he could shuffle he's deciding not to mm, oh the amulet's kind of nice but i guess it runs into a similar problem let's let's see do i want to eat the revolt here mm, i wonder if his top card's a seven ball well, i'll play my land i think that's fine um yeah, I don't think I don't think I need to spend more mana pumping my creatures. And none of those have reach. Just attack for two in the air. And I think I'm gonna play the amulet and kill the propagator drone here. Even if I'm gonna wrath later, I'd still rather I'd still rather do that. Because he's, he's activating this now and getting value from it and all that. All right. That pops that. Pass the turn. This is an interesting game, for sure. I'm going to get to use the amulet here, too. So he doesn't like his top card with El Eladomri. I kind of just wanted to play a seven. There we go. There we go. Um... 
So I have four energy. I'm going to need it to get up to seven energy. So if I go down to two energy, I can still do that. So I think I will activate the amulet. Mm -hmm. It's kind of nice that the amulet chills there. Uh, yeah, it's artifacts and enchantments, but he's going to do all that. Oh, I get to... <laughs> that's funny. I get to make a bunch of chump blockers, too. Nasif is not going to be happy when I wrath all his stuff. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. <laughs> I'm going to go block, block, block. I guess I can not block with the 1-2 flyer. I'm just going to chump with the lifelinker, hit back. I'm not even going to bother attacking. He's got a reach creature. Mm -hmm. Bum, bum, bum. And... <laughs> Wrath for five, this costs seven, right? Yeah, all right. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. <laughs> Get them all out of here. And then I'll play this tapped. So the the amulet, the reason I use the amulet is because it, it just come the it the card just sits there until the until I use the amulet again. Actually, now that the amulet's bounced, it just sits there forever. So I feel like it was worth doing that. I ended up hitting a land drop off it, which is pretty nice given my hand. Yeah, I would say we played him like a fiddle there. Set it up so he used Ugin's Binding and then saved all my stuff and then blew up all his. <laughs> it wasn't going to be easy to get around, I will say that. All right, so let's go. Yeah, let's go Revolt. Amulet. Ping you for two. Use the amulet because you might think I'm obsessed with hitting land drops. But that's just because in this deck, hitting land drops is really good. Ping you for two, and I'm not going to play the Pinnacle Monk. I don't need to hit a land drop that bad. Let's attack. I mean, this is. Pretty, pretty over, I think. Static Prison, get out of here. I have another one in hand. It just feels unlikely that I'll need it. All right, so let's go... Genku. Sack this. Trigger Revolt. Make a 2-2. Two -two, and then get one of my last planes. And then play this. Get three energy. Nugu for five. And... I could play the Static Prison, but I really don't even need to. Ulamog the Defiler. Wow. That's pretty sick. Uh, but <laughs> let's see. There's about a million ways I could just cast Wrath for... Do I have enough mana? Do, do, do. Pay zero. Boom. <laughs> oh, I had a few ways to win that game. <laughs> I mean, this the 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 double wrath ether revolt thing is just so nasty. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Ooh, five zero. Let's keep cruising. I think having the 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 cyclops is is fine. Like when you every now and then it's going to be pretty good. Go in for the clean sweep here, because how could you not with this deck? It, it would it would not be doing justice to, to the cards I drafted without doing that. Yeah, Aether Revolt, get, getting Revolt because you cast the Wrath and blew up a token is pretty nice. I don't know that this demonstrates that the energy archetype is the best. It, it certainly demonstrates that energy archetype with three really good energy rares and two other good rares is good. Oh, Sirkovitz. They love it. Did not expect to face Sirkovitz at 5-0, but I will take it. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep this hand. Funnily enough, I'm actually going to wait on the Perilous Landscape here. Oh, I just meant because it's kind of late for Sirko, that's all. You know, I, I figured he'd be in bed by now. Well, well, we'll put him to sleep pretty soon. Actually, if we don't draw a lands, we won't. But <laughs> I think that this deck will be able to do so. This does look a little bit like a constructed deck. I guess Unfathomable Truths is not so much one, but... Yeah, I don't know if I want to get red, white, or blue. Well, I'm not probably going to get red, but I don't know if I want to get white or blue with this, so I kind of want to just wait, see what I draw. 
Uh, let's see. Sure. Uh, I really don't want to miss playing something. Let's just get a planes here. I'm probably going to want to get a planes given the circumstances. Haha, <laughs> ha, very funny. Um, let's just do this. Nug the snacker. I know it can come back, and at some point maybe I'll static prison it, but this saves me so much damage, and I've got uh, deep analysis in hand and unfathomable truths, so just I want to keep the game going long. I would really like to draw an island this turn. All my fetches are blue at this point, I believe. Yeah, so island or any of those would be would be quite nice. Or the uh, blue double-faced card, that also works. <laughs> All right, I got to your ghost here, Kovitz. Let's see. Draw a card and then scry two. So it doesn't quite bring back the snick snacker. Okay, blue would be ideal here because I could just cast Deep Analysis. But the fallback plan of casting Solstice Cell, it isn't the absolute worst. It does stop that thing from attacking. Okay. Get to energy and pass. Drawing a blue card is basically the worst. It's not even a very good blue card. Like, by the time I draw Islands, Tempest Harvester won't really be on my list of cards to play, so that is a bit unfortunate for me, I will say that. If I draw a blue, I'm like never missing another land drop, but... If I don't, that's not great. Oh, Psychic Frog. That is a good one. I might Static Prison it, though I guess just tapping it with the Zealot also kind of works. Oh, yes. Yes, please. Oh, yeah, that's some good stuff. I really hope he doesn't have the minus three, minus three end of turn. That would be annoying. I'm hoping he's just, yeah, he's just sacking Contaminated Landscape, I think. Oh, no. Oh. Okay. Is he? Is he? Is he? Yes. Okay, good. Because now I get to tap the, the Psychic Frog. Does playing via Circo feel like a win and in at the Pro Tour? Uh, I, I could definitely imagine playing Circo at the Pro Tour, yeah. He is good. I like to make fun of him. That's only because I like him. Mm hmm. Next turn, given I'm at 23 still, oh, what does he have? He's just, I mean, I guess he could activate Psychic Frog is kind of the, the joke here. Well, if he goes to attack, I'm tapping the frog. I'll take two off the, the Serum Visionary here. And go to 21, and then I'll cast Unfathomable Truths. Basically, I'm just going to spend my next couple turns casting card draw spells, and then I'm going to wrath all the stuff away. Well, that's my plan. Hopefully he doesn't play anything too good this turn. Another Serum Visionary. It's good. Do you have one more way to draw a card? And get that back. The, the sneaky snack. Sneaky snacker. <coughs> too bottom. Okay. Into another sneaky snacker. So now doesn't get the first one back. He just cast another one. Draw Ether Spike, huh? Mm. I'm just going to pass here. I'm not that worried about him countering the Unfathomable Truths. The, the, the main counter spell is an energy card anyway. And uh, I'd much rather him counter that than the Wrath, I suppose. I'll tap the Frog. Though maybe I should have just blocked the Frog. And uh, had him discard some cards to it. Hmm. Yeah. Though I guess he could also discard one card. I oh, know he wouldn't want to exile the snacker. Oh man, that's a lot of sneaky snackers. Okay. That makes the wrath a little bit less appealing for sure. Jeez. <laughs> okay. Well, end of turn. I'm going to draw three. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, all snackerinos. Um, Flage is getting closer, not quite there. I could Wrath and not kill my Solstice Zealot, but then it doesn't kill the two Serum Visionaries. That doesn't sound ideal to me. I think I will. I think I am going to Wrath this turn. Force him to spend a turn getting back the Snackers. And let's see. How do I want to Wrath? I need. I need three energy. Okay, so let's sack this. Cast Wrath of the Skies. X equals three. And then I'm going to pay the three. They all die. And then I pass. And I've got, I can sack the Tranquil Landscape. But I also have Ether Spike, which I don't know that it'll do it. But it might be able to stop him from drawing two cards this turn. Like if he plays a expensive card draw spell. Buried alive. <laughs> well, he's already got three sneaky snack, four sneaky snackers in his graveyard. Does he have more? How many of these things does he have? That's a sick combo. I love it, Sirkovitz. That's some bruise. He's got another one. And a transmogrant? Very cute. All right. I guess I really would like to stop him from drawing extra cards. Mm. Though I think I could probably beat them. Let's see. One. So I can bring back Flage here. Sounds pretty good. One, two, three, four, five. Keep deep analysis in the graveyard. And then nug you for three here. And I already played my land. I'm not going to play Tempest Harvester. It's unfortunately like a little bit obvious, but like if his plan is to cast two serum visionaries to get to three cards, like I would, I would really not like there not to be five sneaky snackers in play. Also, this thing can beat five sneaky snackers. I mean, you attack, kill one, they triple block, and you just flash it back. I mean, I can't just flash it back, but I've got, I've got the action to do it there. Oh, that's pretty good. Though I guess I'm just gonna static prison it because he doesn't have colorless at the moment. And then Dream Drinker Vampire. Lifelink Adapt 1, sure. Mm -hmm. It was Menace. Okay. Um, planes. Static Prison. Uh, Witch Enchanter also, yes, would work. But I'm going to get the other thing. I, I also kind of like getting to play some energy cards. Because it just makes the Aether Spike a little better. But no, I should I should have Witch Enchantered it. And then I'm just going to attack. <coughs> mm -hmm. Luckily, did not have access to Colorless here. And I'll nug the, the Vampire. And then next turn, he's just dead. And I've got Aether Spike to protect my play. Aether Spike for six. Uh, he has six mana. And if I even if I don't pay for a Static Prison, I can then just blow it up with the Witch Enchanter. All right. Very cool deck, but <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's so funny. It, I mean, it doesn't matter at this point, so sure, because they all come into play tapped, but <laughs> it's cool that he gets to do it. <laughs> and then I have Ether Spike and also just attacking for, you know, 11 here. <laughs> Pretty sweet deck. Sirkovitz really has a, has a cool one, for sure. Okay. Yeah, I'll pay three energy. I mean, if he's got another way, if his last card is something, oh, unfortunately not. And uh, that's a 6-0 right there. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pay the energy on that. 
and nug and boom all right i mean i was pretty scared when there was five sneaky snackers in the graveyard but i did have a counter spell up for some of those turns and yeah he didn't draw deep analysis fast enough all right look at that a little 6-0 can we get to seven i mean it was really cool they buried alive to get up to five uh sneaky snackers just did not quite get there also i could just you know <coughs> potentially grind through them all i still had a deep analysis in my graveyard I had a bunch of cards in my hand so we are getting there oh yeah i got some always you don't get to 7-0 very often so hopefully hopefully you can pull it off if any deck can pull it off it's this one it's just got a lot of cards that work really well together and if uh any indication it you know, it's tough, because this is day one, and I've drafted now two energy decks, two Eldrazi decks. If these are representative of what this format can be like, I'm going to have a pretty good time. There's a lot of cool stuff going on. I don't, I'm not yet sure about Affinity, Modified, um, what else is going on? So that's like those color pairs. I guess there's like some kind of Sacrifice-ish deck, and... You know, probably red, white beats. Oh, Nikolai Bolas again. I don't know how those work, but these decks have been really fun to play. Okay, I'm on the play. Oh, yeah. This is a hand. So what I'm going to do here is play this. Do I want to play the sink? Yeah, I'll play this as my land. I guess there's no real reason. It's actually tough. This, I guess, is a tapped island. Hmm. Yeah, I'll play this, because if I have to play this... <coughs> untapped, I can definitely do that. Three life is a pretty big cost, but it is potentially doable. All right. Do, 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 do. Island. And I think I'm just going to... Oh, Flage. I'm going to play that Tamiya meets the, the, the story circle right now. It's leaving up Aether Spike, or like leaving shields down for a turn, but I feel like that's all right. All right, so here... This gets some white land, so let's discard sink. Spike flage. We're, we're gonna go for the max amount of value. Six clues. <laughs> uh play this. And I'm gonna pass the turn. Cause look, this makes me get flage back pretty easily. Yeah, sure, you can you can do that. They hit oh, a spawn gang commander, most likely. And then I'll, I'll get to mana leak that. I want to save Demon Fear because I can cast this for one mana here. And then they'll play a land and hopefully hit me for one. All right, I'll take one. And I actually don't mind drawing a land, so I'm going to sack this first. Then I'm going to crack the Tranquil Landscape for a Plains. Mm, Pinnacle Monk I might just play as uh, a land here. I mean, I guess if I draw a land, I don't have to. No, I did not draw a land. Uh, I'm going to submit zero because I, I want to just bring back Phage. I don't need to shuffle any of those back. Let's, I think, crack these two. Because if I draw a regular land, I'll just play that. Because I'm going to want to... I would have to play the Pinnacle Monk untapped anyway. Because I, I need to leave up Aether Spike and uh, cracking a clue. It does look like I want to crack a clue here, though. I did discard an Aether Spike earlier, which obviously makes it a little clear that that's at least something that could be going on here. But that's fine. If they don't do anything, I'll just draw another card. It is annoying that the Siege Gang... Oh, well, this I'm actually really happy. Um... Yeah, that's fine. Colossal Dread Mask isn't, isn't a big deal. Oh, I drew an island. I need to draw... Mm, what do I want to do here? I think I'm just going to bring back Flage. I can do that, right? Yeah, so let's just go... Make him play the Spawn Gang. Spawn Gang, rise up. All right. I'll take a little damage here. Nug the Nightshade Dryad, but then next turn I can uh, play a land, crack a clue, 
and then cast a two mana demon inferior <coughs> and then still have ether spike up yeah i'm just gonna take it i'll go to 16. there's not much red green can do against flage i mean this was a this game really showed the power of tamio meets the story circle huh okay that's fine island um just gonna attack and nug my opponent here because they can sack a token to to power up their thing but i don't think uh it really makes too much sense so they're gonna block and sack this all right and then post combat let's draw a card And then deem the Colossal Dread Mask inferior. And now because they sacked a token, or they blocked with a token, they can't cast the Siege Gang without me countering it. And they, they, they put it on the bottom because they've already missed some land drops. If they don't draw a land here and they have to cast the Siege Gang without playing a land, that would be bad for them. I mean, it's still pretty good for them that they get a bunch of tokens. It's true. Uh, pay two. I mean, the Writhing Chrysalis is big enough to, to trade for the Flage here, though I'm already two-fifths of the way towards bringing it back. What I think I'm going to do, because I don't really have an answer in my hand that does anything. Oh, yeah, that's smart to sack here because it gets the tokens now. Because they're, they're presumably going to be sacking anyway. I mean, oh, this costs three, though. So that's not actually the combo I'm looking for. That's fine. You know what I'm going to do? I guess, what am I going to cast this turn? Amulet. If I draw static net, then I might, uh, I'm, I, I can just play that and then that'll be an easy dub. Witch Enchanter. Oh, I'll play that this turn. All right. Let's attack with the Flage. Deal the damage to the Writhing Chrysalis and then just trade. Oh. We're doing it this way. We're doing it the hard way. Okay. Mm, let's cast this. Oh, yeah, they even take one. I always forget about that. Blow up the Worn Power Stone. Uh, oh, Pinnacle Monk can get back Demon Furrier. But on the other hand, I have two clues in play. I think getting back Demon Furrier is pretty good. So... Let's let's miss a land drop. Something I hate doing. Oh, do they have like a fight spell or something? How many cards are we up on them right now? Oh, about a million. Oh, let's just play Genku. And then attack. I get to attack with both because oh, I was supposed to shoot the the, the chrysalis. Eh, that was me clicking a little too fast. Maybe I should have done that. <laughs> oh, they blocked. Okay. <laughs> it snuck three damage past them. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> that's really great. <laughs> um, let's play the Tempest Harvester. And I think it's better than cracking a clue because I can just use the amulet and it's the same if I draw a land. And if I draw a spell, I can... The, the amulet's so good, it just gets stored under the amulet for future play. <sighs> I mean, I guess I'll still just not play my land. All right. And I guess now I'm going to 1-1 one, one lifelinker, sure. <laughs> uh, I mean, we weren't losing either way, but that is really funny. All right, and that's that's the clean sweep, 7-0. I mean, if we take a look at this deck, that is definitely something. <laughs> You know, you don't seven zero very often, and maybe, 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 maybe you chat does. I don't. Seven zero is hard. You don't have to lose any games. But uh, look at this deck. It had double Wrath of the Skies and Ether Revolts. So this like a bunch of energies. Flage was probably the number one card in the deck. I mean, Wrath is really good, so it's like Wrath or Flage. But honestly, this card's like really not beatable. Like you just cast it as a three mana Lightning Helix, which is already good, and then it comes back and it's just like trades for multiple cards and then just comes back again because it gains you so much life kind of like uro where 
the game just keeps going on, which fills your graveyard naturally. And then I had even had Genku for good measure, Depth Defiler, some just good individually powerful cards, but also like double Static Prison, double Ether Spike, double Harvester. So a bunch of energy slash early interaction, card draw with two deep analysis and the truths. Just overall like a perfect deck and five fetch lands, which made the deck's mana work. So what a, you know, what a card and what a deck. And uh, you know what? That'll do it for today. That, that I can't think of a, of a better place to end. So... As always, I appreciate you hanging out. Decks won't always be this good, but when there are, we really enjoy them. And uh, you know what? I'll be back tomorrow with another draft. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel, and you won't miss a single draft.